Hi there everyone, we are back, 67 Hail Hail YouTube channel, we've got a few wins to talk about on today's video with Jackie McNamara and John McGinley. Guys, before we get on to that, I've got a wee announcement that I need to make, it's nothing major, don't worry, um, we're aiming to get to 10,000 subscribers on the channel by the end of 2020. Now at the moment, um, I believe we're on 8,535 guys, so we need to make up 1465 in the last what 16 days a year john it's ambitious but you know we've got some good fans out there loads of people watch these videos but aren't subscribed what should they do yeah it might be the only 10 we get this season so definitely do it <laughs> definitely. <laughs> um, um yeah no definitely subscribe we've got loads of videos almost every day um hamish is the face of the channel and he's a a good guy so definitely follow him Yes, give it a go. If you watch this video, you're not subscribed, just pause it right now, do it, come back and watch us chat about Celtic. Right, on that topic, Jackie, we had two wins since we last spoke. A um, bit more positivity around the club. Are you, are you feeling that positivity? Yeah, absolutely. I think the not just the wins, but I think the performances have been better. Um, seem to have a lot more energy in the, in the two games. Um, so, no, I think you know it's been a good few days for the club. Yeah. What, what what are the main positives then, Jackie? Because people touch on Turnbull and Sorrow. Are you seeing other ones in there? Yeah, I think the again, energy is probably the, the right word to use. I thought there was there was more energy. You know, the the Thursday night then going into the the game uh, yesterday, more movement. You know, it was it was more. Uh, I think more forward passes in the right areas, getting mm. turning and starting to get at defenders. Um, and the movement in behind, we got in behind quite a number of times in both games. I have to say, and even when he's making changes, you know, there's a there's a energy there as well with the ones coming on. Uh, you know, the performances before that, I thought had been quite flat in some of them. But there seemed to be a lot more energy, and the the, the structure of the team looked a lot better as well. The movement, um, a, a lot less predictable. Jackie, do you think, you know, a player like David Turnbull, has he cemented his place in this team now? Should he be a regular starter for the foreseeable future? Um, and, uh, you know, just specifically, have you been impressed with what he's had to show? The two games, yeah, I, th I think he's, he's done well. He's he just that, that little one further forward, uh, you know, they can put in, he's on the half turn and he's suddenly he's, he's facing the opposition rather than, you know, back the way you're going to cross. Uh, He's had a few attempts at goal as well. He got a goal on Thursday night, a good finish mm. when it came across. Um, and yesterday he had a few attempts uh, and getting good areas. And I think that's a bit when, when it starts taking people away, it leaves space for others to get in behind. And suddenly, you know, you can start using the, the wide areas, which which we got crosses in as well. Uh, I quite liked Frimpong playing that a little bit further forward. Um, you know, it's still times there he's, he's coming inside, but. It's good when he's he's get that taking away the defensive side of it. If you like, you know, he's not got as much to do um, with Ayer behind him. So there was a lot of positives yesterday, um, and I think they'll only get better. Yeah, yeah. I've been banging the the David Turnbull drum for a long time. Mm -hmm. I've wanted to see him involved, not just because I know he's a good player, but also because of the the impact he could make on the rest of the first team squad. Like I just think that whole team needed a boost for somewhere. And I think you got that. The fan base as well got a big boost on, on Thursday night when mm -hmm. A, they saw Turnbull starting and B, when they saw Turnbull performing like he did. Um, you know, Jackie, when you'd been part of Celtic teams in the past, would you have, you know, certain moments when maybe fresh players would come into the fold and the whole team would, would get the boost of it, the boost as a result? Yeah, and it's, it's always the same when you see other players come into the team, how they can handle the step up. You know, I thought his first game, uh, they done really well. The second game was wasn't so good, um, you know. And suddenly, the uh, Neil Neil will pick his teams and the players that he, he trusts to be able to handle the pressure of playing with Celtic. As I said, you don't get you know one game in every three. You need to play every game at a certain level and consistent. And that's what the team need to know is consistency. They've had two two uh, good performances. And two good results, but that needs to carry on now to to next week and the week after, and all the way through to the end of the season. Yeah, I mean, last week, Jackie, you actually 
called for Sorrow and Turnbull to get more match action. So that didn't turn out too bad with with that prediction. Um, just in terms of Sorrow, you know, Neil Lennon kind of hinted after the match that he might be looking to bring back the players that got the team to the Scottish Cup final in for the, the final against Hearts. I'm of the opinion that Sorrow should start that game. What are your thoughts on that in terms of um, leaving Sorrow out and bringing Scott Brown back in for a bit of sentimentality? I can see can see both sides, you know, in terms of the Neil saying that the team that got there played the game as Scott's been they were wrong. Scott's been a fantastic servant for for the club. Um, you know, I think he's one of the players just now and when things don't go wrong, eh, sorry, don't go the right way or has a bad game in, in his eyes, you know, he's over the hill. I, I think he can be used in the right manner. You know, I think it's a big ass to play him every game. Uh, with a short a short spell in between, it's getting that, that mixture and and I, I like the balance of the team over the last two games. Mm-hmm. You know, Scott still got a big part to play. Um, it'd be interesting to see what what team mm-hmm. he does pick next next weekend. Uh, but if you're looking for the same consistency in terms of performance and result, yeah. hey, Hamish, are you on the Sorrow train as well? Well, I was just going to say, John, because it's it's very much over the last you know couple of years we've had the opinion that Scott Brown can't play every game. I think everyone would agree mm-hmm. with that, probably other than Neil Lennon up until the last week. <laughs> Equally, I think people, no one wants to see Scott Brown frozen out completely and play no games because we all know that Scott Brown is still, as much as he's been poor this season, he does still have a role to play both on and off the pitch. Mm-hmm. So it's an interesting point Jackie raises there that you could almost... You know, everyone's now saying that Sorrow should play next Sunday and for the record that I would play Sorrow as well. But you've almost got the situation now where Scott Brown can come in and play the big games almost, a cup final when you need that bit of experience. And then, you know, a few days later when I think we play midweek at was it, uh, St Mirren or someone like that, a few days later, we can then Hamilton, drop Hamilton, we can then drop Sorrow back in. So we've got options now there, Jackie. Is that the way you see it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. When he's making changes, and I think you know over the last couple of months, he's made a lot of changes to personnel and shape, and there's not been a there's not been a change in performance. It's been quite kind of flat. So you're hoping now that you know it is a lot of the time it is down to confidence. Certain players, you see, I think it was good to get a clean sheet as well uh, yesterday. You know, for Duffy and, and Julian at the back there. Um, Taylor coming back in as well, and I are going over to the to the right back area, uh, playing a four uh, and pushing Frimpong further forward. So he's got options here in terms of his balance, his team, and Andy can change it for certain certain teams, which I think is important because you know the, the game on Thursday is different from the game yesterday, where it was more open on Thursday. You know they came out to to go, whereas yesterday you've got to break the team down, which happens most to the most of the time in domestic games. Um, it'll probably be the same in the final next week. I'd imagine Hearts will try and stay in and catch on the break. So it's having the team set up properly that they can they can do that and have the right personnel in the right positions to go and hurt Hearts and you know and have the energy to do that. Jackie, just on Greg Taylor, you know, I thought he played well yesterday. I know you're close to him. Have you spoken to him since the match? And, you know, were you pleased with the, the progress he made in the team yesterday? I thought in the second half especially, he came really came onto a game. Yeah, I, th- I thought he'd done well. Again, when I've watched him earlier on in the season, you know, he's been down that left-hand side and sometimes he's been isolated. And Greg's game is not a winger. He's not a, a left winger that he's going to get to the take players on and, uh, and do that. He's a defender first and foremost. Uh, his, his final ball, his crossing has got a lot better. He's got a good few assists this season. I thought yesterday was better because he, he had players to link with. You know, he can do his passing and get the next ball without having to take people on uh, and, and do something he's not done before. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I think it's it's helped, it's movement in front of him. You know, when you're, sometimes you're playing one striker and Somebody in front of him has moved across. You're very isolated. And sometimes you get two players up. And you see it sometimes with, with Frimpong on the other side as well. So it's having options there. You know, you can just give in a tumble. Or Eli Nussi, you see the, the one with the goal. Yeah, we get the, the break with the goal. But Eli Nussi, Greg's round outside. He comes inside, opens up. And we get the break with the, the second goal. Yeah, I thought I thought Greg Taylor was good. Um, Jackie, do you think he, he gets a bit of a, you know, a harsh... 
criticism from from some quarters of the Celtic support sometimes, Greg Taylor? Yeah, again, that's part and parcel of being Scottish. Mm. Uh, mm. You know, Northern, uh, I think if you look at his his numbers and his stats since he's came in, you know, in terms of the win ratio and games he's lost, um, you know, that's you can't please everybody. The most important thing is he does his job, you know, nice and uh, simple the way he can play. First and foremost, defensively, being sound. Although most of the time they're on attack at home domestically, um, but I think he's I think he's done well. Jackie, just you know, the last couple of matches I feel like has been a bit more. Um, it's been quite unifying for the supporters and and the players. I think that you know there've been there's been such a disconnect there for the last few weeks. Did you happen to see the clip of the the fans outside the ground yesterday cheering the the team bus into Celtic Park? And do you think that kind of level of support is a, a timely reminder for them coming up in this crucial period? Yeah, I think if, again, everybody's just desperate to get back and watch the team in the stadium. Mm-hmm. You see it uh, down in England, there's only a couple of thousand people at some of the games, but the noise and atmosphere, there's been a frustration that they've not been able to do that uh, and show the support or show you know, the um, frustration at some of the performances. Yeah. Uh, and, it's, and it's spilled on for that. You know, and yeah. that I think they're, you know, they've taken it out and they've looked at different ways to, to send the frustration across with banners and protests and everything else but as I said last week everybody just wants the same thing and that's a successful team I agree yeah I think that was a big frustration is that as supporters we don't have a you know, an outlet to be able to vent our frustrations at the moment because we can't go to games so I think that's where a lot of the the you know ill-advised um, fans protest prior to yesterday have come from and you know maybe some of the the more unsavoury scenes have come because we've not been able to go to games and invent our frustration so hopefully going forward there's less to be frustrated about and hopefully the team's starting to turn a corner um, yeah guys I think we'll leave it there a bit of positivity nice to do one of these videos at, at long long last and hopefully um, this is just the start of a, a bit of a revival this season uh, thanks for tuning in everyone thanks for watching this video remember to subscribe if you've not done it yet and we'll speak to you very soon